This is a summary video for Virgo decans. Eight of Pentacles, Nine of Pentacles and Ten of Pentacles. As always, I've summarized this video with a small um, caption to sort of, you know, capture the essence of this particular zodiac sign and the trinity of these minor arcana cards. And I've said here, work to build a life and love to build a future is your life's legacy. So I feel really strongly that this is uh, obviously earth energy and Virgo is here to show us all things Virgo. That is, you know, an honest day's um, pay for an honest day's work. Um, just before you realize you've finished one job, there's another one coming along. And it's almost important as well to remember to pick from the vine, you know, enjoy the fruits of our labor. And therein lies the joint, you know, venture of your masculine side, your feminine side, and then also to live uh, an abundant life um, in the Ten of Pentacles, to build something that's long lasting. So that's essentially the three cards just to get started. Um, but let's have a deeper look. So the three cards are, are the Sun in Virgo, which is Eight of Pentacles, Venus in Virgo, which is Nine of Pentacles, and Mercury in Virgo, which is Ten of Pentacles. Now, as I said before, you know, this is about masculine and feminine energy coming together to create something long lasting. Let's start with Sun in Virgo. Now, the Sun is exalted in Virgo because it is most happy there. It is most happy. And if you know of any Virgos, they are always happy when they are working, when they are busy, when they are productive. And as the Eight of Pentacles, you can see here, um, this person is, is concentrating on the task at hand. This person is looking to obviously, um, you know, perfect their work. Um, and the sun here is about, you know, their identity. And Virgos in general do have, um, you know, they identify uh, with the sixth sphere, with the sixth um, house on the wheel of the zodiac, and that is the house of service. So it's health and it's health and and the daily what we do on the daily. So it is about our routine and our our um, day to day. But the Virgo itself is the sign of service. So when you think of Sun in Virgo with the Eight of Pentacles. It's essentially um, taking one design or taking a template and then producing it on a mass scale, you know, one after the other. It's preparing it for the, the realm of foundation, the, um, the Sephira of Yesod. And Yesod is the ninth Sephira on the Tree of Life. However, um, Hod or Splendor is actually the eighth Sephira, which is what is happening here in the Eight of Pentacles. This is somebody who's received a really good design from what's happened in Netzach, coming over from the Seven into the Eight, and now replicating that to the point where it's almost like a production line. Mercury is also obviously the ruling uh, planet of Virgo, and it stems from the word mercantile or merchant. So anything that we do on a you know production level, um, one after the other is going to make Virgo very happy. And Virgo is most, um, as I said, I can identify with themselves and as they present themselves as the sign of service um, when they are most productive. And this is why the sun shines in the Eight of Pentacles. Let's look at Venus in Virgo. Now, Venus in Virgo is obviously not a, a male uh, character. It's a female character. Um, and the nine is uh, indicative of Yesod on the tree of life. But this placement is also um, Venus, which is obviously the Empress. And the Empress is about, you know, the mother um, eventually in the major, um, in, you know, uh, form 
But in the minor arcana, she's not the mother yet. She's actually the maiden and she's in the garden and she's wanting to pick from the vine. You can see here she's also, um, you know, she's on her own. She appears quite youthful. Um, and in some um, Kabbalistic stories, she has a falcon on her uh, glove as well because falconry was used uh, as part of a, a courtship sport uh, in a Jewish holiday or the Jewish Valentine's Day. And so this sort of um, pastime was used to seduce uh, men to in the courting sort of um, in the courting dance. So this is another sort of reference to the falcon or it's, it's known as a perigene falcon um, and why this girl is is holding the falcon in the garden. She has her own money. She has her own uh, independence. Um, I love this card as well in particular because this is a woman who's financially independent. Um, and maybe there's a lesson here for her to learn about hard work because we have the devil being uh, the decan of Capricorn. Uh, in this card and this is about you know signing up for a contract joining forces with somebody in the material world now in the background you know as above uh, we have the man who's working away you know perhaps he's single too perhaps he's waiting to find his you know wife to be one day um, but in the meantime he's busy working away at his career possibly saving money which is um, if Virgo are in the positive they are you know, they can be quite diligent about saving money, but also it's in preparation for this new beginning, this birth of, um, you know, the future. And you can sort of look at that more so when we get to the 10, because when we join the male and the female together, it's almost like the happily ever after, you know, the, the, the legacy that they're building uh, for the future. But essentially, um, before we just go into the 10, I just want to quickly recap. So the sun in Virgo is where Virgo um, is most happy, which is of service and being busy, keeping his hands busy, being at work, having lots to do um, and feeling like they have purpose. And when they have purpose, they are very happy. They are very, they feel productive and they shine. You know, they are most happiest when they're shining and when they're busy. Then we also have Venus in Virgo, who's the woman in waiting. She's the represented by the Empress, the Venus, the, the energy of love. Um, and it's obviously uh, still ruled by the Hermit. But the decan is that devil energy. And the devil energy is about um, that, you know, mutual respect, but also the material world. Um, maybe having a better grip on the value of money, having an understanding that you do have to work for a living. Um, whereas she is sort of enjoying the fruits of her labor as opposed to, you know, she doesn't just work uh, seven days a week. You can tell here that she is a lady of leisure, um, but she has money. So she she's obviously earned it in some way um, or she's received it in some capacity, but she is a lady in waiting. Then in the Ten of Pentacles, we have Mercury in Virgo. And you'll notice here that the formation of the um, pentacles on this card is in the formation of the tree of life so the positioning of the sephira of each of these 10 sephira is quite a deep card um, and there's many sort of interpretations of this card but essentially mercury in virgo is where um, you know it is exalted uh, once again because mercury is you know the ruling planet of, Mer of virgo and it is the culmination uh, because ten of pentacles is malkut it is the the manifestation of all that we have achieved and all that we have attracted and into our lives and we've worked for. And it is now coming to fruition, uh, investing for the long term, investing for the future. Um, and the decan here is Taurus, which is uh, represented by the Hierophant card. The Hierophant card is also associated with the card of marriage. Um, it is also the card of moral compass, being, um, you know, knowing the difference between right and wrong. And manifesting what we want into our future as something solid and something that has uh, that will have a legacy. You know, what will be our legacy? What will be leaving down, leaving behind uh, or pot potentially passing on to our children? And this is why the Ten of Pentacles as well is also known as the card of inheritance or financial windfall. Um, you know, family business as well. And many 
times I will read this card and it, it does often indicate a family business um, and again something that may have been passed down depending on what card this is positioned uh, next to but it is the culmination of of the man and the woman and then finally like you know setting themselves up for the tree of life you know life is for living life is for creating a family and stability and legacy so that is the overall summary the short version of sun venus and mercury in virgo um, and when we look at the next slide i've also just repeated that so you have an understanding of when we're working with all of the minor arcana cards that obviously the one to ten fall in the one to ten on the tree of life and of course uh, on the tree of life with the court cards even though the court card cards are, are not numbered aces are always in keta the kings are in two the queen is in number three knights are in number six and the page is in the pentacle now if we are reading toth uh if you are reading anything kabbalistic right away is the way that this sort of judeo-christian you know format has been put together however if you do uh, study things kabbalistically or toth um, the king is often replaced with the knight um, and the knight um, basically weds the queen and then he becomes king um, because in the kabbalistic cards you'll notice that there is the the chariots of the element so the chariot of earth and you can only have a chariot unless you have um, a knight and a queen combined because you have a horse and you have a throne and it creates a chariot so that's sort of something to keep in the back of your mind if you are wanting to look at kabbalistic interpretation um, so that pretty much wraps up this summary video um, very briefly um, but if you have questions please leave them in the comments below and i'll be happy to answer if not and you'd like to take the full course don't forget to check out at newangeltarot.com forward slash the decan diaries or if you're just interested in booking a reading you can do that to newangeltarot.com forward slash bookings hope you enjoyed the video and i'll see you in next week's class bye guys